In today's video, we kindly roast our great friend Kyle's Zoom sales call, who is a closer at Digital Ox. Oh, bruh, what? Jesus What Christ. the hell, bro? <laughs> Never do that. That's bad. If you are looking to improve your sales IQ and get better at sales so you can close more clients, then you need to watch this video. Enjoy. Well, I, I was checking you guys out. I saw you're in Huntsville. How long has huh? the practice been established there? 2016 or 17, something like that. That's when the, we integrated. Uh, I've been here. I've been here 2006, so whatever long that is. Okay. Uh, this is a long shot, but I got a good buddy from there. Do you happen to know Derek Stroop? Nah. No, that's what I can say. I don't think nah. so. That's I me, mean, but that's an easy, you know, it's a normal name. Yeah. He grew up in Huntsville. He's becoming a, um, he's kind of getting big in stand up comedy. He's kind of blowing up and uh, uh, he's, he's a big Huntsville boy. So, huh. um, well, anyway, <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll just jump in. I'll ask you some really specific questions about the clinic. Uh, you probably saw we're, we're pretty niche in what we do. So we'll just make sure that it's the right fit. And then I can show you everything we do and we can just go yeah. from there. Right, cool. Yeah, sure. Okay. So I, I think that you um, were referred to us right by um, Dr. Yeah. Hall. Yeah. Okay. What led us to the call? What, what do you got going on? What kind of patient specifically are you looking for? So I think you're doing like knee pain, joint pain type sort of thing for her. Uh huh. So we're looking for that, like patients um, that have a knee, but also have an income enough to pay for anything. Our, my ex late, late experience on anything digital media is it's really good for people that have absolutely no money. <laughs> yep. Um, so like if, and so like 99.9% .9 of those leads will be, you know, below the poverty line. So like, if that's the normal for you guys, like I, it's, it's probably a bad fit. No, so that's the opposite. We, and I'll show you how we do, but what that comes down to is targeting without targeting you're just going to end up with a big net of whatever. And I'll show you exactly how we do everything to make sure that the people that we send in are purely pre-qualified. They've got the pain, they've got the money and they know it's not covered by insurance. So, uh, unless it is, are you, are you not doing HA? Are you, are you doing like stem cell and PRP, that kind of stuff? PRP, stuff like that. Okay. Um, what's the average case fee for one of your knee patients? Yo, I don't know if you guys agree. That was pro that was like a very glossed over, like huge objection right out the gate that I feel like Kyle could have done a better job of like real quick tackling and then moving on. Um, he was just like, no, no, we don't do that. So what's the case fee? And I, f I feel like uh, this was a recurring theme. And in, in one of the last calls we reviewed, Kyle actually didn't understand that one of the docs was joking. So I feel like when, you know, Kyle hops on, we can give him better feedback on like humor. And it's funny because Kyle's like a, a comedian. So like when the guy was like, yeah, like 99.9% .9 of people don't have money. Kyle could have been like, <laughs> yeah, if you go with another company for sure. And that would do, that would have been like such a huge slapper statement. Also covered it, also done humor. So um, I felt like he could have just like hung on that a little bit more before going over or at least addressed it because he didn't address it at all. But that's all I got. Yeah, I agree. I think don't agree with that statement. That's the main thing. He agreed with it. Yeah. But what you're saying, he should disagree with it and move on to the next one. I agree. That's why I wrote down too. Cool. Um, average case value for knee is going to be maybe um, 1500 to 2000 something like that. Okay. And is that, um, what's all involved in the treatment generally? Usually just, like I said, this is a knee pain, probably like, like two or three PRP shots. You know, we, we can, we can do regen. It's a, you know, kick up the value or kick up the cost a little bit more. Um, I, I'm just going to be completely honest with you. Lately, we our leads are so bad we couldn't sell them French fries. So, um, okay. Uh, so it's like we've been bare minimum. You know, a lot of people. It'd be nice if we got people that had like, you know, normal insurances we could do rehab and things like that with them. But you know, um, then the case value would go up quite a bit if you could do you know bracing or you know uh, acid rehab things like that. Are you doing uh, hyaluronic acid injections? Do you have that? Well, not anymore. I mean, you call it costs more to give the shot than it does to get reimbursed. So. Okay. Okay, so the option for the STEM injections is there, but the reason that right now you're just having to sell the PRP because you don't have people that can pay any any higher. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So, and that's that's one thing we would want to focus on is higher case fee. Pretty much, if they're both bring, if it brings in. Yeah, we have no idea where these cheap leads are coming from. Kyle didn't ask, so like he's like, yeah, we couldn't even sell them French fries, and Kyle's just like, okay. But we could have been like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, okay. So, like, where are they coming from right now? Is that is that ads? Is that paper? Is that TV? Yeah. Is that blah, blah, blah? Is that blah, blah, blah? We just have no idea. So, that yeah. was something that we could have gone deeper on because when we're – all this is just ammo so that when we go into the pitch, 
we're going to say we're the exact opposite of what he's currently doing, but we don't know what he's currently doing. So yeah. that's just like a huge thing that we should probably ask. If anybody's giving us negative feedback on what they're currently doing, we have to know everything about that negative so that if in the pitch, if if we relate ourselves to any of that negative, they're going to be like, oh, okay, it's yeah. not the right thing. He should have played better doctor. It's like someone saying, yeah, the foods I'm eating are not making me feel good. And the doctor is saying, yeah, okay. Yeah. Versus asking, well, what foods are you eating? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Better um, diagnosis. Been less than 2,500 per patient. We're not the ones to use. Our specialty is getting really pre-qualified people that can pay 2,500 and up. Yeah. Um, How do you do that? Because I've never spoke to a digital marketing company that said anything more than they said, they said the same. And so far to date, I've never had anybody supply me with anybody more than just like a, you know, like a, um, I'm not trying to mean, I'm just saying it's like, I, I know what I hear you're saying, but Sorry. I'm just saying, I've never gotten a, a lead from, from social media in the last like maybe five years. That wasn't like, that wasn't. Do I have you there, doc? I'm sorry. Locked up on me. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, th I think I, I, I call what you were saying. Yeah, when trying to be me, I was just saying it's like I'd love to focus on those if, if using a social media campaign. Yeah, but I said, I'm just like you know, my history. Everybody says exactly what you're saying about like, oh, we only get these. We super target. We have all these things, and everybody's rich that we you know do. And and to this date, 100 percent of that's wrong. So I'm saying, right. so if you can show me how that is, like I can do. Re we can do regen here. We can do PRP, yeah. but we can't. They can't have a credit score of 12. You know. Okay. And, yeah. And I'll show you, there, there are very quantifiable differences. Like it's not going to be my opinion or, or a gut. Right. I'll show you specifically what we're doing differently. And no, yeah. and it's literally, when I say no one else is doing it, no one else is doing this. And I'll show you what that is. Uh, but it's going to take some time here. I got to go into the details. But as long as you're open to that, then um, if yeah. we're doing the stem cell, if we're doing the actual regen, what would the average case fee be at there? Uh, three, three, three to 5K probably. Okay. At least, you know. Um, yeah. And then if you had embracing that, what's that, another six, 800? Yeah, about six eight. Yeah, like six hundred. Okay. Okay. Cool. And yeah, and you know, I mean, we're doing this exact same thing everywhere, and we've got really good success. I, but I also talk to docs every day that have had that experience. So we will go into the details. I won't leave you in the dark on that. Uh, yeah. Just got to get a little more info on what exactly is your niches. Is it just you know joint pain stuff or knees or what is it? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, basically, at the end of the day, are our three niches. Now we'll do some other joint stuff too, but. I mean, I would love to do neuropathy, but I, like I said, I'm scared to do it because like I've never found it. There's no advertising um, that I have done that's, that doesn't bring anything but like super poverty. Like never neuropathy, we'll, we'll tell you straight up. Neuropathy is the hardest one because. So real quick, since this guy's biggest pain point and objection is going to be his nightmare experiences with other marketing companies, right. sending them people who don't even have two nickels to rub together. Kyle's should extra focus on the parts of the demo and presentation that are going to highly focus on how we qualify and how we make sure that everyone coming through the doors is going to be occupation worthy, et cetera, stuff like that. The The main reason Stevie is because for every single prospect on the other end, the more believable path is different, not better. If he's like, yeah, I tried this before. What makes you better? And we're just like, Oh, we're just better. That's not going to work. We have to be wildly different. So he should, I, I just wanted to like, there's a couple times where like, he's basically giving Kyle the roadmap to like how to present the demo. And Kyle's like, kind of not taking it. He's like, I've been with certain companies before, which companies, how did it go? Yeah. Were, were the leads bad? Was the quality bad? Yeah. Was the booking rate bad? Was the close rate bad? There are like a bunch of KPIs that he just doesn't know. And he's just yeah. not. So he's going to go in super blind and then go over like Oracle and different things. Yeah. Um, I would say at this point, I don't, if I had to like rate it, I don't think this guy's closable doing what Kyle's currently doing. So I guess we'll see. Yeah. Cool. To add to that too, I think that was a good point. Asking the agency, because we have a lot of data on the uh, other competitors that work in our yeah. uh, space and we know what they do because they're yeah. all, it's all pretty common. We're yeah. getting these clients from everywhere. The second thing on that is this is a referral. We have already a, client with us that's performing and getting results that's just a, such an easy way of saying hey i understand that you've been burning in the past you were referred by and she's getting absolutely great results with us look at the stats she just i just looked at it right now she just closed seven people last month that's and that's just not even fully being updated yet yeah, you're exactly right. So Anthony, basically like this dude is dropping what I call belief statements. He's like, yeah, social media marketing sucks. Like this sucks. 
It always brings in bad quality. If you go into the entire demo and letting him have these belief statements, he's just going to keep them until the end of the demo and then not close. So he should be confronting these upfront, not in a super adversarial way, but being like, yeah, well, like how, how well do you know the lady that referred you? And he's like, super well. Well, she has to be doing something different, right? Like it's probably not social media. Maybe it's just the agencies running it that aren't that good. And he's like, yeah, okay, well, we can at least agree there. So why don't I show you what we're doing different? Because if you just drop these huge belief statements and keep them to the end of the demo, he's not going to close. So yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. okay, exactly. you get all the leads in the world. Yep. Right? They usually, you know, usually take the bus there or, you know, or whatever. I mean, they're terrible. Yeah, um, so I don't want to do that, but yeah, but joy pain, maybe, you know, um, I'm all for that. And we do all right with neuropathy. We just have, we tell people you have to, your expectations can't be high. We're, we're talking five or eight patients a month for neuropathy. Um, and we generally don't do it out of the gate for the same reason. We're gun shy too. Whatever we do with you, the first go around, we got to hit a home run. We got to get your ROI. And then if you want to look at adding in neuropathy later, we, you know, we can talk about it, but yeah. knee's our top performer yeah, across the country. So we, we, whenever the option is to focus on knee, that's where we want to go first. Um, You've already told me everything you need to tell me about. I, I would I usually ask about what kind of marketing you've had, you know, what's gone wrong, but you've already covered that. So if we just talk about a realistic goal and, and, you know, just if you can put aside the past for a second, we launched something out three months from now, ideally, where would you like to see the monthly revenue for the clinic at? Uh, like for the, this, this campaign, is that what you're talking about? Well, I guess we really want to figure out what's your monthly revenue now, the average, and where do you want it to be in three months? And we're going to figure out what we can do to, to get to that number. Yeah. I mean, we're around hundred K. Uh, but we we have a pretty diverse you know office so um i call it msk like musculoskeletal stuff um it is at an all-time low so like you know all the, the advertising we've done in the last six months have been has been like i, I wouldn't wouldn't come together to pay for one week's worth of ad spend um so he just hinted right now though that he is in dire need of a solution so it's not like he doesn't need a solution he needs something so let's see if kyle can yeah, Bridge. let's see if he can pull at the the strings there. Where's the gap? It's terrible. So, um, but yeah, we would uh we would hope to, to go up like thirty to fifty k a month. I mean, that would be great. I would be I'll be, I'll, I mean, I'd be I'd be happy. I would. I mean, at this point, I would like to you know double what I spend, and it'd be fine. With, right, but, right. You know. Well, we we like to, <laughs> you know, we like to under. So real quick too, we love working with clients like this because this is a very down to earth, realistic client who's even happy with a two to one. So everything over two to one is going to be fucking bananas. So super solid to understand. These are the types of clients you want to bring in who are, who are realistic in expectations. Promise overperform, but we don't want to underpromise that much. We're, we're going to do better than that. But honestly, 30 K for any new clinic doing knee 30 K is a really good realistic starting point for us. A 30 K per month increase. Um, so that, that's great. Then we just want to make sure that we have realistic things that we can do for you. So the, the next question is also going to be a little tricky is just asking about conversion rates. When we ask conversion rates, we mean if we send in 10 qualified people, historically, how many do you sign up? And that might be hard to answer right now because you haven't seen any qualified people. It would be, it would be very hard to answer for me right now because like our, our, our statistics like, you know, are terrible with that now. I mean, we yeah. used to close like 70, 80 percent of people. But in the last, you know, I would say more than six months, six or eight months, you know, because like, you know, I always tell us to, to um to like when I've had this conversation with other guys, like in your business, mm -hmm. it's like you, you can't, there's a difference in sitting in front of certain types of people, Definitely. you know? And so like, like I would, like the last guy I was like, I would, I bet you all the ad spend and everything I've ever paid you that you couldn't close one of the people leads you walked in, that walked in here. Like you just couldn't do it. It's not because they don't want it. There's no, there's nothing there. You they know? can't, they literally can't. No, they can't. I mean, like they all, oh, they would love a, an option, but like, when they're trying to make sure that they, you know, pay rent or pay. Yep. So what's changed? That's all. Hope we find out what's changed because something's changed recently. So unless we find it, you know, uh, or, you know, and, and they're already in like in kind of every kind of subsidized program they're in, where are they going to come up with $500? You know, where are they going to come up with $200? You know, where are they going to come up with, you know, if their Medicaid or Medicare doesn't cover a hundred percent of it, they're out. Right. And so, if I, and so I, it'd be hard for me to tell you. I would say we used to have a pretty decent close rate mm -hmm. when we had, um, you know, we used to do like dinner talks and things like that before COVID and we had, we had a, you know, pretty decent rate and we did postcards and different. Other <laughs> All right. Fair enough. But I, I mean, if you were closing at 70, 80%, then that does give us a good idea. We just need to make sure, you know, you work with some clinics and they are closing 10, 20%. That's not going to be a good fit for us. You got to know what to do with these folks when we send them in. But again, it's going to be quality. We're, we're not going to schedule those people. They do. They just, they won't so, make it through our yeah, process, so I'll show yeah, you. kind of touched on that. Y'all are doing the scheduling? Is that, is that what I'm understanding? We do 100% of the work until they're standing in the clinic. We're doing literally everything. Wow. Follow-up, 
reminders, every single thing. If they don't show up, they're still ours. So if they haven't walked through the door, we're doing it all. And I'll show you that. I'll show you that right now. Um, well, actually, last question is timeline. Uh, I assume you're looking for patients right away, but anything coming up that would prevent care? Like, are you switching offices, going on vacation, anything like that? No. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I'll share my screen. Um, the big the big sticking points, Doc, is your price range right? It makes sense for the ROI. Um, are you offering payment plans? I didn't ask you that. Yeah, we have several different options. I mean, we have a couple of different finance options got payment plans and you got a, a solid program in place with a realistic goal so that all means that it's a good fit on our end so i'll take you through the nuts and bolts and see what you think of us and then uh, oh and before i share my screen i always have this with you i think it's not gonna be an issue but at the end of the call like this there's always it's always yes sounds good no not a good fit that's totally cool i always ask people if we could avoid the maybes or i'll think about it because usually it's a polite way of saying no i feel like you've been down this road long enough but if i show you everything and, you, and it makes sense your questions are answered can you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down at the end that, that's all i ask I can appreciate that, but I can also appreciate that I usually don't make all the decisions right away. So, I mean, I, I can, I see what you're trying to do that way. I mean, I know. That so I, I tried, I tried to call it right before he didn't do it smooth enough. So yeah, yeah, he yeah. got, he got con confrontation, but real quick, unless you give people a, a reason why they're a good fit before you share the pitch deck, it's very clunky and very awkward. So yeah, mm -hmm. honestly, given X, Y, and Z, I think you'd be an amazing fit. And then you ask permission to increase compliance. Would you mind if I kind of share my screen to show you kind of the nuts and the bolts of how the program works. But sorry, Stevie, what were you going to say, bro? Yeah, I was going to say, honestly, I prefer to not use the yes or no, um, unless it's like super well old, tons of experience using it because that right there just showed weakness in my opinion. I think it was unnecessary pressure on the doc. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree, Stevie. It's like it's like you're on a date, and then you're like, "If I pay this bill, will you come have sex with me?" You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I pay this bill, we're we're fucking right. Yeah, yeah, literally. To me, to me, I'm a, I really do want to start checking in on this because I'm not a huge fan of it. Just to be honest, um, well, in general, just okay. because of who we are and our product and what we do, I think it's unnecessary um and this is a real, real quick though yes stevie let's talk about that i think the entire first half of this call could use a lot of work with like rapport relationship building why we're different like setting up for the demo i feel like kyle right now is heavily relying on the guarantee yeah that's satisfaction um the other thing is i don't know if you guys agree or disagree i don't like the very like checkboard question asking closer framework where we're like ah into my next question cool and that leads me to my next question i like when yeah. it's very like conversational and like yeah where, where'd you go to school and you got recommended by this person cool yeah did you go to mm -hmm. school with her or like do you have the same stuff oh, okay cool yeah so basically i just have to ask a couple questions um just to make sure if we could even help in the first place but like when it's more conversational it lowers the sales resistance and i think we can all agree this guy's sales resistance is really high right now and mm -hmm. kyle's not like finding the ways to like get in there and seem different the company's different, the offer's different, but Kyle's not coming across that way right now. That's how I feel. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think the rapport building was super important to ask that question because now yeah. it's now it's weird. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. It got weird. So Kyle right now is digging himself out of a hole. Let's see what happens. That we've had a little bit of conversation, but I have gone through a lot of these sales courses. And so when I when um so I typically don't make the decision right away. I usually have okay. I'm just being honest with you. No, that that's cool. And again, really, I'm not trying to get you like saying that you'll commit today, but just be straight with me, I guess, is what I'm asking. And yeah, I will. I'll be I'll be completely honest with you. OK, I appreciate it. All right. Just let me know when you can see my welcome slide there. I got it. OK, so this is the system we use to help all of our practice owners effortlessly add 30 to two hundred thousand dollars per month every month while saving time in the process. Uh, to give you a quick background on us. We were founded six years ago and we have specialized in medically integrated clinics and decompression that entire time. We have over 170 clients across the U.S. We are number 380 on the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing companies in America. And we have over 30 full-time W-2 employees. We don't outsource a single thing that we do. And the point of this is just to let you know we have been doing it a long time. We speak the language. And about 90% of our growth has been from word of mouth. So what our program is not designed to do, we're not going to burn out your staff and turn them into a call center. We're not going to send you unqualified leads that waste your time, tire kicking. Uh, and we're not going to sign you up and leave you stranded without communication. What our program is designed to do is to be 100% turnkey for highly qualified appointments only. We have an 82% average prepay and show rate. We are a full transparency company, and I'll show you what I mean by that. And then we do guarantee our work as well. And so Dr. Garn is one of our region clinics in Maryland. We've got Dr. Uh, out of Missouri. 
both of these guys are doing uh, neuropathy and uh, regen. For Dr. I know we're very heavily focused on knee. None of that really matters. Just showing you a snapshot of the stats here. So obviously we want to schedule as many people as we can for you, but this is the only number that we focus on as a company. How many pre-qualified people walked through the door, showed up in the clinic? We know that's all that matters to you. So that is our focus. Uh, we do track no-shows, follow up with them immediately and over weeks and months. We track cancels, prepays, closes, and revenue generated. So pretty straightforward, but any questions on the stats themselves? No. Okay, so I'll take you through our competitive advantage and how we get results in four steps. This is where we're gonna talk about what we are doing that literally no one else is. The first thing is we have a partnership with Oracle. They're the largest data company in the world. We are the only company in this space that has this partnership and it took two years of vetting to get it. We only got it because we are the largest and longest standing in the space. The reason that they're so strict is that they provide us with actual W2 information. So those other companies that have told you we're gonna find your rich guys with knee problems, they're going on search history. They say, all right, John Smith clicks on a lot of BMW dealerships, you must have money. He's targeted as a financial lead. We don't do that. We look at what did John Smith report to the government that he makes in a year, household income, estimated net worth, are they homeowners, what industry are they in they're retired from. We use all of that to target the audience that's the most financially qualified. Uh, we put together a series of different ads for you too, not just running one ad. Some of those ads we'd want to use some uh, real pictures and videos of you and your staff in clinic, just iPhone stuff. But that kind of, and then we do launch those on Facebook and Instagram. Facebook right now, despite how much everybody's fed up with it, it is hands down the largest producer of digital leads uh, of any form. They've been doing it the longest, got the most people on there day to day. So when people see the ad, they can pick up the phone and it'll go directly to us. Or what most people do is fill out this form. We grab their contact info, ask them about their credit score right out of the gate, uh, everything going on with them physically. And then we do ask directly on the form, are you on Medicaid disability or state assistance? Obviously that's a big red flag. We know only about 5% of those people do close. So we follow up with them, but we just vet them very strictly. So that's step one, that's the ad itself. The second step is we're gonna assign you a patient coordinator. This is the other big, big difference. So the full super skeptical, skeptical about finances and we just went over the pain assessment. That was the perfect time to be like, yeah. does any other company that you've worked with in the past have done this for you to get the credit scores before they actually come to the office? I just, I just wrote down this exact same thing, Anthony. So as a closer, you're supposed to take the front half of the call and connect it to the second half. Yeah. He didn't do that at all. So remember when you said that all the quality was crap? Well, have you, and I just wrote this, have you ever seen any other companies collect this information and this information and credit score? And he'll be like, no, and be like, okay, well, that's probably why you had really bad results in the first place. So there's like a giant gap that Kyle's not co connecting right there. Mm -hmm that no one else is doing. This is one person. They are trained and experienced phone sales people. This is not an entry level job. We do not use a call center. Every single one of our patient coordinators is an actual salesperson. It's their chosen career. They average $65,000 a year and they're directly commissioned based on your show rates. So they have skin in the game. They're not making money if you're not. They follow a proven 12 minute lead qualifier phone process. 100% of the follow-up is done for you. We do 24 hour appointment reminder calls and that leads us to an 82% industry leading show rate. And another point that I don't usually touch on, but you kind of said that this has happened. When we say that they're tied to your success, if they're sending you in, if unqualified people, they're showing up, they're going to get fired. Not only are they not going to make money, but we'll get, we're, they know not to put someone in your schedule that thinks it's going to be covered by Medicare, that makes these kind of mistakes. So we just want you to know that process is in place. Then once we get people on the phone, this is why it's really important to have salespeople doing the job. They're going to ask a series of intake questions, but they do what salespeople are good at. They slow down. They take the time, they get them talking about how the pain is affecting their life, their family, their career, everything that gets an emotional connection with the treatment that you're offering right out of the gate. And ultimately, it's just about giving them the best first impression of your clinic for two reasons. One, they're much more likely to show up if we do that. But the other thing is we're going to walk these people through the door already warmed up. They have a full understanding of how this works, what's covered, what's not covered, and uh, just knowing that they're in the right place for that treatment. Anyone that moves forward, if they're on your schedule, they have a full understanding of what it takes to work with you. Uh, then we do brief education on the clinic and the treatments. And this is really where we're just reassuring them. You know, with regenerative medicine, it's great. We can just tell them, if you've been told you need surgery, this is a pain-free, you know, risk-free way of handling it instead. Keeps you off prescription drugs. Just all of that good stuff that makes them very comfortable about coming to see you. Uh, and then if we are running a prepaid campaign, we would collect that. It goes directly into your account. And then we schedule the appointment. So once we schedule, this is now what we shoot over to your staff. This is the who, what, and when. We take detailed notes on every single call. And this is also designed to help you increase conversion rates. You know, if John Smith tells us that he can't play with his kids because his knee hurts so bad, little things like that, that people really spill their guts in ways they want when they're looking you eye to eye. We want you to know that going in so you can use that to personalize your, your discussion. Uh, then we do a, a shared spreadsheet for every month. Every month has its own for tracking stats. Your staff fills out the green. We fill out the blue. 
We tell you who it is, when it is, occupation, did they show up or not, uh, what niche they're coming in for, so all means. So it's very similar to the first half. It's, it's not very conversational. So I've took a presentation class before. People are can't pay attention that long. People can't pay attention. If there's no engagement back and forth, I guarantee he's missing half of what he's actually saying. Where's the question in between the slides? Uh, the other thing is the micro agreements, right? Do you see how this would be a qualified lead? Yes, yes, yes. So the end of the call, he already had like six yeses. Yeah. You get the final yes there. So it's, it's, it's very cold, to be honest. And you know what's not a micro agreement that a lot of people think is? M makes sense? Any questions here? That's not a micro agreement. That's not actual engagement. That's just people, they could be on their phone like, uh-huh. Yeah. Like Stevie is right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding, bro. But no, the, the thing is you, every single closer should be challenged. If you were giving the same exact demo to him, her, them there, it it's, what are you there for? Just play a call recording. Unless you can connect all the dots to what they said in the beginning of the call and where their gap is, you're not actually closing anybody. You're just doing a presentation. So that's like the super common complaint that I have with most closers on a pitch deck is they'll just like rely so heavily on the pitch deck and give the same demo over and over and over and over without relaying it to their specific problem. So we should know like why this guy had trouble in the beginning and relay every single slide back to it. Like you said, Anthony, to get the little micro commitments, because mm -hmm. we don't know if it was the call center the lead quality or the people that came in after all that didn't convert to care. Like we have no idea where the gaps are. We just know that there is one. Mm -hmm. And I think people too are scared because they're like, Oh, I need to follow the script. I need to be on process. Yeah. Exactly. But that's not how sales is. You know, you want to follow the process and you have yeah. mutual engagements doesn't mean you're going way off process. Now, if you yeah. had like a 10 minute tangent to call about something else, yeah. that's going way off process. But when you're trying to get the sale and you're trying to engage with them, it's okay to have these little one-off engagement questions and yeah, fill them out. You know, what would you say, Anthony? Uh, what's the likelihood you think, percentage-wise, that this deal gets closed? Probably like two percent. I I was gonna say ten percent. I was gonna say ten percent right now, currently. Yeah, I'm gonna go with forty. I'm actually gonna go with fifty because he's a referral. No, still, I think I think still. 10. I would see. I would go with 20, but I think our offers are so strong that it might like sway them in one way. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You're the right. offer is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I need to know what happened. Did they show up? Did they sign up? What did they sign up for? Everything that auto populates this chart. So the idea here is you can just pop this open and you'll have an up to the minute report on what's going on. Then we sign you a success coach. This is your account manager. So this is also one person, doesn't change. They're in charge of your communication. We send you bi weekly stats breakdowns. We do a once a month Zoom call with you where we go over that stat sheet in detail, show you this is what we did, this was the outcome. Based on your goals, this is what we're going to do next month. You give us a thumbs up. The whole idea here is we just want to make sure no communication gaps form over time. And we're just always on the same page with where you want to go. Okay. And then the last step, we uh, do a bi-monthly Zoom mastermind. Everything that's just getting everybody in network, sharing best practices, you know, rising tide raises all ships. Uh, and you can sit down on the live webinars and actually ask questions and, and interact one-on-one -on -one or watch all of the archive videos as well. And there are paid speaking uh, options down the road if that's something that interests you. So that's it operationally. Any questions pop up and then I can go through pricing and everything. Oh, no, that's good. I know just you said, you know, everybody kind of says the same thing. Is there anything in here? Do you see why we're different? The, the points where we're different or does it just look like the same thing to you? I want to make sure. And the follow-up thing with the, 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 all that is, is, is uh, like, it's, that's incredible. That's to have someone do all that. So I mean, we've, we've trained, trained, go ahead of our virtual assistants to do stuff like that, done, you know, all kinds of things like that. And, you know, it's, hit or miss you know we've had good ones <laughs> anyway yeah um, but um i mean that's a job in itself just kind of keeping the phone the sales team going anyway mm -hmm. uh, that's great the targeting and the way you guys are doing it i mean that i've, I've heard that before um not the oracle but a different you know like it's, you know um so but i am optimistic that that, that uh you know getting that you're you know being honest about that <laughs> and uh if you know because that's one of the things i was i was off about um i did not like about facebook is is like I knew that they couldn't really target income. Like I said, if I click on Lamborghini ad, it doesn't mean I can afford one. Right. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? A lot um, of dreamers. They're, those yeah. are literally tire kickers. They are the ones yeah, that don't people want. That, right. You know, so like I said, I, if it, it, and, and I know they're getting their information because they clicked here or they like this or whatever, and that doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, um, so I mean, I'm optimistic. So yeah, let's go over pricing.
So we do a three-month agreement, and then it's month-to-month -month from there. First 30 days. Real quick on that. Guarantee. We have a one-time. First of all, Lamborghini won't be posting ads on Facebook. Um, <laughs> second of all, this goes back to what I said before on the credit score, when we're asking for credit scores. He completely didn't even bring that up. And I know for a fact a lot of companies don't do not do that or if anyone does that. So he he was very fond on our service and us taking the calls. 99% of people, to be honest, probably 100% of people love that because no one likes to do extra work. Back to salespeople all day. But the fact that the only thing he talked about was Oracle on our qualifying process, but missed everything else, that just goes to show you the lack of engagement. He's not paying attention. He really didn't pick up on some of these nuances that are making us stand out compared to other competitors. Yeah, I've seen some of Kyle's clothes. Dude, this is not like Kyle. This is like, I don't know if this was the end of the day and he was tired or something, but there's, yeah, like every connection that was sitting there waiting to be connected just wasn't. Well, guys, for those of you guys running agencies and stuff, this is the importance of actually having training and proper managing, like reviewing calls and making sure that everything is being uh that we understand where everyone's at and how to get better that's why we do this set up fee of 995 which covers the five-day patient coordinator boot camp so what this is is when we assign this person to your clinic they're going to become like a member of your staff where you'll actually meet them on zoom calls they learn the names of everyone in your clinic all of your equipment procedures streets around the clinic landmarks around the clinic the, we designed this so that the first day this person starts calling people they sound as local and in office as they possibly can the illusion is that this is your employee calling on behalf of your clinic. And so is it like, from let's say start to go, like it's five days before this campaign starts or is it longer? When does? Yeah, this is happening before we ever launch the ad and they uh -huh. do, we give you a questionnaire for your staff to fill out. They do quizzes. We do role plays with them. Um, you know, just drill this stuff over and over the course of five days. Anytime we have a new clinic, that person just becomes like, they're going to know every detail. Nice. Okay. And, and then we do two programs, the DIY, we generate the leads. Your staff does all the work, but what we're talking about is power. So the Oracle advertising system, the patient coordinator, 100% uh, of the work done for you, the success coach, the mastermind course, area exclusivity is also locked down, and then we guarantee the work. And you can choose an ad spend anywhere between 15 and 2,500. Uh, that's totally up to you. Do you guys kind of make recommendations based on like area, population? I don't know. I mean, like on that. Yeah. So my perspective here is I always lean in with the ad spend that I think is best for them. So instead of giving, giving him the option of 1,500 or 2,500, I'm usually going to make that decision since I am the expert and I am the doctor. Um, and I would know that by this time of the call. So realistically, Kyle should have went forward with a specific ad spend that he thinks is best for him. Cause now he's asking him, well, what do you think is best? Yeah. I mean, to get, we always recommend a $2,500 ad spend. Um, we don't touch a dime that goes straight to the platforms, but at a 1500 ad spend, you're targeting 150,000 people at a 2,500. You actually double that to 300,000 or more. Uh, that's just based on what, Facebook allows us. Okay. Doubling that just gives us a heck of a lot more at bats putting people on the schedule. Okay. So what is the time timeline to get to get rolling? So we do the first step is a 30 minute Zoom call with your account manager, uh, who would be uh Jesus. Then two weeks later, we launch the ad, and within 72 hours of ad launch, we are putting people on the schedule. So just over two weeks for uh, uh you know fully implemented and people are coming in. I think that was good. It was a good little quick visualization of Two weeks, 72 hours, people on my schedule. All right, cool. Okay. Um, what else? What else we need? That's really it. Um, I know that the concern, you know, is that, is this going to work? Is it going to be the same as everything else? Um, so, you yeah, know, it's a, it's a four month commitment within a 30, then it's a 30 day. Uh, three months. So three months, yeah. but then anytime in the first 30 days, you're protected and you can get out. You're not stuck to the other two months. Oh, okay. So there's this way that, so I, let, me, let me make sure I'm clear on this. So it's anytime in the first 30 days, you can just say like this ain't working. Correct. And this is out. But then after that, it's three months, you know, three months. And then after that, there's a 30 day out. Is that what it is? Um, so sorry. After the initial three months. So the initial three months is, and, and then it's month to month. Uh, so it's three months and then your month to month going forward. Month. But the first of those three months is the guaranteed. Right. So if you like it and say, okay, this is good. Then it's just two more months. Oh, shoot. Did I freeze up? Right. And then at, let's say at six months, I've got you. I can, I can see you perfectly. So I'm okay. Got you back. Got you back. Um, so after, like I said, after the three months and this month to month, what is it like? You have to have a 30 day notice or something like that. So we, we put in the contract that we need a 30 day notice, but we've never enforced that. You can, if you're, you know. Oh, bruh, what? Jesus. What Christ. the hell, bro? <laughs> never do that. That's bad. Keep going, keep going, keep that's going. That's fear. You know, a week out and you want to cancel, that's cool. We put that there so that people can't say very last minute, day before next month starts, hey, I'm out, I want to, and we've already prepped everything for the next month. So we do that to protect ourselves, but we've never enforced that. 
totally fine. I just, I mean, I just want to know, like, yeah, see, it wasn't even an issue. All he was asking was a question. All he says is, yep, that's exactly how it works. Okay. I mean, cool. Yeah. A I, lot, of, a lot of times when prospects ask questions, people that are timid, take it as an objection when it's not even an objection. Yeah. Guys I'm don't noticing, do that. Yeah. I'm also noticing that he's talking like at the end, he's like, what else? And then Kyle brought up the concern. Yeah. He brought up just a concern. Feel, just be You're like, exactly that's right. it. And that's it. And just You're let exactly him, right. Let him think about it. He re brought up objections like he didn't already answer them so mm -hmm. that's not what you guys want to do guys we're in closing time now like yeah. you know you know things get start off great and sometimes they don't end well so this one kind of know all the options up front yeah. okay all right so we're looking at like a thousand startup and then about fifty five hundred dollars a month uh for the full service oh uh, yeah at the, at the 2500 ad spend that's great yeah, not, yeah I'm, 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 I'm thinking on my side okay yeah. okay sounds good might as well try it. okay awesome let me pull up um the juices calendar here all right so <laughs> through yeah. all, through hey, all yeah. that he, hey, closed it. he still closes them so obviously it's a win but some of the biggest takeaways is we can always get better there's we can always get better and better and better and this is going to reflect in the overall closing percentage of the entire company for me um this shows that you can close people with a fantastic offer and a great program with not really having a Easier said than done. Easier said than done. You <laughs> but, what, what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is like, obviously Kyle does great. He, he's a great salesperson. This call didn't go as well as his other calls go. He's still able to close. He was also a referral as well. I mean, one thing I, I see, those questions he did not ask about the competitors. Part one of that is identifying, you know, what went wrong and getting to the underlying issue. Part two of that, it helps us qualify this person too. Because if this guy is just a shitty ass closer and we're bringing on a shitty ass closer for a money back guarantee in the first 30 days, screwing us. We're just wasting money there. I think that's part of the qualifying process too, right? Yeah. Because I've seen it before where they're like, yeah, this is all shitty leads coming in. But in reality, you might not be the best closer. So I think that's overall. That's of that. Yeah. Kyle, great job. You closed them. Obviously, this is all constructive criticism. We're only trying to make you be top of the game, and this is how we do it. We break calls down. We always look for improvements. Obviously, let's celebrate the win. This is a, a close client. But let's capitalize on all these micro uh, pivots that we can make within this call to make it excellent. Tough love, Kyle. I love you.